<laughs> Hello, family, friends, fans, and fellow adventurers. Welcome back to Practical Heroes with our second flagship campaign, The Sands of Sildaris, set in the almost entirely homebrew world of Eroth. Uh, deep, deep inside of which, last time, you guys made your way uh, to the Bimbleduke airship dock, where you met the dashing and daring fan, the Air Ganassi airship captain of the Bumblebee, uh, who unintentionally ended up being a knockoff of Han Solo, and I truly, truly promise was not the intention to begin with. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. I was just thinking, hey, cool aviator. <laughs> um, but it's fine. He's the ultimate <laughs> um, Ultimate pilot. Exactly. But you guys boarded the Bumblebee secretly and embarked on your journey towards the Silent Isle because, of course, there is only one of them. Um, as you did so, you were greeted by the sight of a gnome jumping off one of the tallest mountains in Bimbleduke, only to find him half a day later caught on an air current on his hang glider, and you assisted him by pulling him onto the bumblebee. However, the hang glider was lost to the air currents. But you didn't let that stop you, because frankly, it's just some random dude. And you carried on <laughs> on your way to um, where you were greeted by three heralds of Aetalania, the goddess of journeys, in the shape of three holyphants who were on their way to the Sunset Archipelago, more specifically to uh, Boogledoon. Um, which is a fun place that we might go this time if I decide to put stuff there. Which I'm debating. Um, but, <laughs> with all of that said and done, you decided your best bet was to land in the city of Hapetra, the capital of the Silent Isle, uh, because it's the most central location. So it gives you access to almost anywhere on the Silent Isle itself. Um, you found that your landing passes were already handled by the Runestone Forge paying off the guards, and you made your way into the city proper, um, where Warden revealed some of the local customs, including the fact that uh, you cannot drink at the inn, and you cannot eat your food in the market. You must take it elsewhere to eat it. Uh, and also, mm -hmm. some people walk around without trousers on, because, you know, it's custom, it's climate. Some people wear skirts here. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you made your way to the Hapetra Inn, where you got a room and some information surrounding the cracked monolith, which, of course, contains the danger gloves that protect the city, uh, which is a joke that <laughs> <laughs> no one will get, um, because that was <laughs> off-stream. Uh, <laughs> but yes, it glows when the city is in danger, um, and you were pointed to two drinking taverns in the city, the Cracked Chalice and the Verdant Goblet, which is a little bit shadier than the Cracked Chalice. Um, and of course, pointed towards the Forum, which is the debate hall in Hapetra. And where we'd left off, I believe you were making plans to head towards the Verdant Goblet. So with that, what would you guys like to do? Did you... Uh... I don't know if I remember this. Did you say that like the crack goblet wouldn't have rooms? Was that part of it? Um, yes. Yeah, so you, you do have a room at the oh, Petra okay. Inn. 
Um, oh, okay, okay. The other taverns Just are curious. usually more reserved for drinking. There are some rooms available, but they're certainly not to the same standard as somewhere like the inn slash hospital. <laughs> where you have your large communal bath that is able to heat itself and clean itself. Ooh. Fancy. Mm -hmm. Almost like a nonsense. Ooh. Yes. Uh, but you have one in your room, if you remember. Uh, so I wanna, I wanna take a hop. Mira throws a shit ton of bath bombs in her hot bath. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Just all <laughs> It smells so nice in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think when Chester comes down, he's doing as the locals do, and he's Donald Ducking it. Oh my. <laughs> he's just got the suit, and then it just cuts yeah, off. Yeah, well, you know, you gotta look, still look good. Love it. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess I'm ready to head out. So are you... Are you, are you wearing anything like? <laughs> you flustered <laughs> us. We're flustered. Yeah, I'm lost. <laughs> uh, like, what do you mean by yeah. <laughs> Is little Chester on show? That's the that's the real you know, question. <laughs> you know, no pants. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna uh, sort of you know get it situated beneath various yeah, furs and hair. Yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> naturally. <clears throat> All right, well, you all ready to head out? What happened to your pants, Chester? <laughs> oh, Says Mira wearing uh, five pairs. Mira has uh, pa like five pairs of pants and four skirts over it. Do you need pants? Uh, no, it's 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 a couple of things. It's uh, the local custom, seemingly. And also, I don't know if you know this, I'm from far in the north where it is quite cold. And here oh. it is Hot. And I am sweating my balls off. Easily. Oh. So, you know, I figured I'd uh, two blades, one stone this thing. That makes Sweat sense. It. You sweat your balls off, so mm -hmm. you don't have any balls. Got it. Um, Mira, Mira is, is seemingly unaffected by temperature. She always wears the same thing. Um, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I uh, inhaled all that bath bomb dust. It's a lot yeah. Of, yeah, I got a lot of bath dust in my lungs. <laughs> you got bath lung. I do have a bath lung. There's oh, going to no. be like a freaking like Morgan and Morgan ad one day that's like bath bail ball. <laughs> Have you or a loved one been affected by <laughs> bath bombs? <laughs> yeah. Call call us. We'll uh we'll get you on the asbestos train. Asbestos filled bath bombs have been affecting all of Aeroth. Probably. Oh my uh, god. Fireproof bath yeah. bombs. Yeah, they're yeah. fire yeah, they have to be. Well, alright. <laughs> so Linger is in her people. usual clothes, because she's not much on fashion these days unless there's an event obviously that's a different situation no, of course uh and and rip just just to be difficult is wearing big parachute style pants <laughs> and no shirt doing the opposite mm. <laughs> i love tea. that for him yeah very yeah. very mc hammer mm -hmm. <laughs> fun times for rip specifically uh, I and guess this me. all uh, sort of begs the question, where are we going? Uh, are we going to get our debate on? Are we going to go to one of these taverns and try to get some intel? Well, yeah, we need to go get information first before we go to the... Mm. the high tower? The regular tower? A uh, tower? Yeah, do we know where that is? No. All right. I'm guessing it's not as obvious to us as it is on the map, bitch. Depends where you're looking. Um, <laughs> but no. Not down, um, that's for sure. You you did see um, a tower 
um, near where Warden remembers Balika being, um, mm. and also a fairly built-up location where Warden remembers Balika being, <laughs> um, as you were flying over. But similarly, Correct. there were other kind of towers dotted around. Um, there's one kind of to the north east um, near Ithikos or in Ithikos. Um, there's one over at Grogzalzik. Um, lovely place this time of year. Uh, <laughs> There were two Same. over at Kyrestra. Kyresta, even. There's only one R. Mm. One Silent Isle, one R. <laughs> um, and another over at Zrod Kireza, down here. If it wants to ping, there we go, Zrod Kireza. Well, that one's quite safe. It sounds safe. It's like a good, friendly <laughs> sound. Rolls off the A top. thunderclap every time Warden mentions <laughs> the name. Zrod Geza. <laughs> well, it seems like we have an abundance of towers. Now, is this, like, is it literally called High Tower? Or is it just, it is a High Tower? And it may have another name. I just, I feel like it's probably just, like, all part of the steaming, you know? Hmm. All right. Well, let's get out there and get some, uh, get some data. Or data. I will say I do feel like I should. Well, I would like to go to Bellica. Okay. I'm ready. I'm game. Me too. Well, before we leave, I would like to see the monolith and the danger gloves. Of course. <laughs> The danger gloves do not exist. They're only in Lindsay's notes. Um... <laughs> I know. I'm kidding. Uh, but she does want to see the monolith. Just pretend like she didn't say the last part. Yes. Um, also for, for Steph's benefit, because Steph was, I think, still loading in when that was happening. Um, oh. Danger glow Camera. was misread as danger gloves. <laughs> well, now that oh. everyone knows. Nira has danger gloves. No, she doesn't. She actually doesn't have gloves. The one item of, of clothing. all the things. <laughs> that and a of beanie. All the th oh, she doesn't have a beanie. <gasps> it's because the horns get in the way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just make them with crochets and little horn caps. I yeah. bet they get real cold. <laughs> That'd be cute. <laughs> so, what you guys Be in this camera. Just <laughs> not having it today. <laughs> um... Well, I suppose we should decide what kind of information it is we're even trying to garner by going to the Verdant Goblin. Goblet. Rip, your the handwriting is atrocious. Is a fantastic name for uh, another tavern <laughs> that is absolutely being noted down. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, make like a baby and head out. What do you mean? You're so confused. Wait, it's just wait. a saying I've heard. Quite common in the, in the far north, I assume. <laughs> Do... Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. People are weird. If we can find a, a cartographer as well, that might be helpful. You just well, a map. Yeah. Oh. A map would be good. All right. I'm going to keep my peepers peeled. Yeah, let's 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 peel the peepers. You um certainly would be able to locate a cartography shop on the way. Um You head inside, it's quite like a modest looking building. Um there's kind of a number of cartography stations set up. You can see one or two are occupied with people uh cartographing. Uh that's the verb. Uh, it's not drawing maps, it's cartographing. Mm -hmm. um, or cartography. Putting it in the notes. If you fancy it. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it is 
from the looks of things, um, run by a lovely uh, minotaur lady. Um, Does she have who, pants on? Yes. Or a skirt? She has a kind of long, flowy, um, very thin fabric-looking pants on. Nice! Um, not quite I, as I'm... balloony as Rip's MC mm -hmm. Hammer pants, but like mm -hmm. nice and long and flowy so that if you're walking and there is wind, you get a nice breeze through them and it's nice and cooling. I'll be right back, nice. sorry. Okay. Um, and she is more than happy to provide a map of the Silent Isle for the low, low price of three silver pieces. All right, here you are. Uh, one gold. I very much appreciate. She starts counting out the change for you. <laughs> no, no, please, please. Oh, I don't wish to do math. <laughs> mm. Thank you. The math would have been done for you, but it's fine. We appreciate. Thank you. Yeah, but then <laughs> later I'm going to have the silver around. I don't know what to do with it. I just pay everything in gold to avoid the math. Fair enough. <laughs> to each his own. <laughs> when in Hapetra, um... Brilliant. Uh, so okay, well, when I open this thing, does anything say high tower on it? Uh, no, there is nowhere marked <laughs> as the high tower. Um, I imagine Warden would be somewhat surprised to note that Belica is very firmly noted on the map, um, mm. given his history with the town. <laughs> um, but it does appear as we switch screens. Everyone else on the stream is now able to see. Um, oh. Almost exactly oh. as you guys have your map of the Silent Isle. It's pretty much exactly the same. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to hold it up and have a look and just ask you, you wouldn't happen to know, uh, and I see it's not marked here, where uh, a place called the High Tower might be located? She um, looks down at the map as you're kind of pointing through it and talking and looks quickly back up at you um, and just... I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Inside check. Go for it. I would like to inside as well. Inside mm -hmm. check. Mira, Mira just... <laughs> oh, I'm good at this. I did that on purpose. Okay, well, I'm nine. <laughs> uh oh uh oh No. Whoa. Warden got six plus three, and Chester got three plus six. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, well, we'll just all do things. I don't know what was said, but... Hey. Whoa! Thank God for does... Lindsay. Hold on, does reliable talent not apply to insight? Uh, well, we're at, no. Oh. I don't think so. Weird. Oh, is it the one where, like... No, it's just a persuasion, like the, that one? Is that what uh, you mean? I, I don't know. I know you have one where you just can't roll below 10. Oh, uh, that's just persuasion and deception, uh, I, I think. Well, definitely Fair persuasion. Enough. Yeah, just like talking. Oh, is it the bard yeah. one or is it the rogue one? The bard one. Oh, uh, I was thinking of the rogue one. <laughs> that's why. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I was thinking of reliable talent. Um, <clears throat> Linger cool. and Rip both simultaneously narrow their eyes at the one. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, Linga, you definitely pick up that she was very quick to answer and looks a bit nervous. It's, it's, I think Linga would kind of pick up the vibe. It's not necessarily that she knows loads, but it's like, it's, she definitely does know something. <laughs> Mm. Um, At the very least, can... the name is known to her. Yeah. Can she, she like, maybe, like, nudge Maywood? I don't know. I'm gonna Linga hope can't that nudge they Maywood. <laughs> Not Maywood, Chester. I was <laughs> looking and reading at the same time. Maybe she can. I don't know. She's a mm. wizard. Rip could. Absolutely could. Um... <laughs> well, I just got goosebumps. 
Yeah, that was Rip. Um, <laughs> Rip just reaching out it, of the monitor. <laughs> like the ring. All right, so oh, Winger is going to think it, Rip. That doesn't check out to me. Seems like she knows more. And Rip is going to jump over onto Chester if he'll allow it and kind of like give him like a little like pull on the, the fur by his head and, and a little hand signal that's like, keep digging. She knows. She knows something. He just gives Very Chester Very weird. Hmm. That's sort of yeah. uh, curious that a uh, cartographer of your fine skill, may I say, uh, has not heard of the high tower. Uh, perhaps uh, we all have these memory blocks from time to time. The, this block could be loosened by some mm, gold uh, additional payment, let's say, if you could perhaps mark it on this map. Update it, if you will. It's not the story the cartographers would tell you. <laughs> what? The, um... Make a persuasion check, Chester. Yeah, this is the yeah. one. I, I can't roll below a 10. Uh, 25. Doesn't matter, it's a 25 anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn. Um, she kind of leans in a bit and is like, Please, uh, not in company, or at the very least, keep your voices down if you were to talk about it. Um, and she kind of looks around a bit nervously. Um... Uh, but of course, if there is something uh, that is not on your map or you want a more local map, and as she's kind of talking loudly to you guys and looking around, you see she kind of slides her hand across the table and taps on Belika with a finger. Uh, we are happy to provide. Mm, that is most kind of you. And he uh, slides another gold on the... Uh... Of course, Smart. please. Uh, if there is anything else we can help with in the future, do not hesitate to ask. Uh, but of course, discretion is advised. And caution course, is always necessary. Mm -hmm. My uh, my parents, I should say, were, were in the business of cartography. Way far to the north, did I mention? You did not. That is very interesting. Where are yeah. you from? I'm from uh, Dragon's End. Oh, shoot, was it golf? <laughs> yeah, Dragon's End. <laughs> Dragon's in, End. In the Halidor Isles. I've, oh, I've heard oh, of yeah. this place. I've never been myself. Yeah, yeah Fields Cartography. Maybe not the most uh, fancy name, but it suited us at the time. Of course. Uh, well, I, I will be certain to... Uh, Look for it, if I am ever in Dragon's End. He bows. <laughs> she kind of dips her head back at you. Um, if if that is all. Well, it is. Yeah. Well, thank you. Come again. And very nervously, kind of hurries over to someone who's kind of drawing at one of the cartography tables in the corner and you can hear her just kind of very loudly <laughs> assisting them in marking various locations on the map. No, no, please, if you're drawing a town, you, you represent it like this. This is the symbol. All right, well, that was uh, fruitful, I will say. You know where the hot tower is. And you know what, uh, 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 Warden, you wanted to go there anyway, so... That works out quite well. Yeah. Uh, I wonder why she, she didn't want to talk about it, though. That's sort of weird, right? That is kind of weird. Hmm. Um. Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, there has to be a reason. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, uh, yeah, Warden, can you just roll me a d20 real quick? Uh-oh. It's where you'd say that. It's where you'd say anything, honestly. Warden, fuck, don't speak, don't Five. speak, don't. <laughs> cool, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the pain in his voice. The You're nervous. 
So what would you guys like to do? What did the roll mean? <laughs> things. What kind of thing? <laughs> what things the fuck? Stuff? Dungeons and dragon-like yeah. things, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope my mic. Wait, uh, are you doing the the DM thing where sometimes you just ask for a roll and it doesn't mean anything? That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> All right. That, that old Mitch chestnut. Would never do that. Mitch I have been known to do that. To be fair, I did that a lot in my <laughs> Curse of Strahd game just to keep them nice and nervous. <laughs> it's a good uh, good setting well, for that. It's, it's a great wait. setting for that. Mitch, I can't wait for you to do Curse of Strahd for us next. I will do it for Campaign mm -hmm. 3 if people want it. <laughs> yes! I, I want yes! it. I've never done I it want it too! Yeah. I will very happily do it. Um, KB3, Curse I just of needed Strahd. a break from it because I suddenly... I went from one campaign of Curse of Strahd to suddenly three simultaneous mm -hmm. campaigns of Curse of Strahd with three That's very different much. groups and burnt out like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well... You have things to do in town. I mean, I, I have do. nothing to do. I just, I'm just here. I'm just working here. I'm on duty. I'm working. <laughs> oh, uh, Liga, actually, no, you wanted to do something. Just on our way out, if we could swing by the monolith, I'm just curious about it. I'm sure right. there's a plethora of markets and stores that we could while away many hours slowly and painfully <laughs> sifting through however it sounds like the tower is very important and we should set out feel towards like that if i may i feel like if we had to shop we could just like write a list down and then send it to our shopping guy later and he could pick I everything think. up for us mm -hmm. you know and then it just be delivered back to us how I feel about it. Rip has There's suddenly, always a shopping man. Rip has suddenly <laughs> imparted the idea of off-screen to linger, and he's giving you this strange mm. feeling that whatever this off-screen is, <clears throat> perhaps that shopping yeah, could take place in this strange and mythical pocket dimension. Yes. <laughs> I, I do um... all of my shopping off-screen. Um... <laughs> Ronnie just said shopping man and harmonica man are the same person. They I are. So. That's why he's always following us. <laughs> Ronnie's, yeah. got Ronnie's got it. Ronnie's got it. So, uh, what, what, you guys like to what do time of uh, day is that, roughly? Uh, yeah. It's certainly a time. Um, that time. It's the most time. <laughs> Um, at this point, I mean, you'd kind of settled in, you'd had a bit of a look around, you went to the tavern, or you went to the inn, sorry, um, and I believe there was a quick bath there last session, but then that was mentioned again this session, so it's fine. You've had a bath, uh, so at this point, it's probably kind of early afternoon, around kind of 1pm-ish. So at this point, the sun is high in the sky, and you're all seeing why Chester is Donald ducking it. <laughs> Mm. It's. I feel like it's. It's warm, or it should be. I'm not warm. I'm a regular temperature. Steam curling off Mira from all the water evaporating. <laughs> That's what's going to cool. Mira is going to end up looking like SpongeBob with no water soon. <laughs> I don't. I don't need it. Mira is need just it. a greenhouse. <laughs> It's Mira's just that agreeing. thick layer of, or the thin layer, sorry, of water that's constantly covering Mira is keeping her. Oh cold. no, it's thick. It's and a thick thick. It's so thick. <laughs> TH high CCC. Is uh, touching Warden like touching a hot seatbelt in a car? Oh, God. <laughs> it's gotta be. It's like touching a hot seatbelt? Yeah, when like you if get you touch the Oh, like the buckle. Right? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, if your mom's on a Zoom call, it's better. It absolutely <laughs> is. More like a I, more like a hot slide on, a, on the playground, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, oh, His, oh uh, God. His thermal pace needs renewing, you know? Mira, like, puts a hand on Warden's, like, arm, and it just, like, is so much steam. <laughs> no, stop it, Dolores. No, I'm sorry! <laughs> stop it, Dolores. Oh, my God, he almost killed Mitch with that one. <laughs> All right, well, what do y'all think of, uh, we go to the monolith, 
Uh, we spend maybe some time in the tavern and then head out uh, for uh, Belkiah in the morning. Yeah. You really are the Wizard of Oz. So where are you that sounds good to me. It does. Acceptable. Very well. All right. To the monolith. Excellent. You, Which uh, means a single lift, if what? my calculations are correct. You are. It is the singular lift in the, the region, mm. in the immediate area. It's okay. literally just DM'd me. <laughs> Stop, you're going to make me run. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was laughing so hard. It was the way Ethan said it. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, we are basically Wizard of Oz, aren't we? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Tin Man, uh, the Big Lion. Yeah, if I could do an impression yeah. of that, I would. <laughs> yeah, Scarecrow. <laughs> then Lindsay's Dorothy with... Uh, oh, yeah, Toto. Uh, <laughs> with yeah, Rip, Rip, Rip is Toto oh, confirmed. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> Weird. Um, oh, well, so we need art of this. Who can we get? <laughs> so, you head to the cracked monolith. Um, it is towards the center of Herpetra. Um, it is actually quite near um, the debate hall itself. Um, and there is this kind of winding path up from the cracked monolith that takes you up kind of the natural rise of what you assume was a hill before the city was kind of dropped on top of this location um and at the top uh warden would know is the citadel which is kind of the main headquarters of those in charge of herpetra um and whilst it is um probably sort of about 60 feet above you um, in terms of this incline. It is still lower than these walls that Warden does not remember being around Herpetra before now. Um, but as you um, head over to where the cracked monolith is, um, there is sort of the general hustle and bustle of the city. Um, but here and there, there are very clearly tourists and other such individuals who are stopping and looking at the cracked monolith. They're kind of, um, going as near as they dare or as near as various guards are allowing them to. Um, as you kind of approach close, you can hear there's these two halflings, um, who kind of they're talking to each other and as you get closer should we test it okay let's test it let's test it let's test it danger and they both draw knives on each other and start running at each other and the monolith does not start glowing because it glows when the city is in danger not when people are in danger um and they're just having a little knife fight and occasionally stopping to look over and see if it's glowing and they just disappointed put the knives away um, wow whilst you can see the guards were keeping an eye on it it's also like it's being regarded as if this is a very normal occurrence for people who aren't mm -hmm. familiar with how the monolith works mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. trying to make it glow <laughs> but they're keeping an eye on it to make sure no one gets hurt <laughs> nice uh well linger will flip her book open and mm -hmm. summon her quill and make a few notes about that <laughs> yeah. um, but yes one test is... already finished <laughs> It is, um, in and of itself, this um, ten-foot um, spire, almost, um, that would be solid stone if there weren't this kind of ruinous crack that sort of spirals from the point of this spire all the way around the side of the stone. Um, towards the center you can see the crack is at its deepest and you can see it does actually go a fair few inches deep into the stone you can see kind of the center of this um, rock is 
the same as sort of the outside material. Um, mm -hmm. It all seems to be one piece of this solid stone um, that is, let me just double check the colour before I say I'm something just... wrong. And go, yeah, it's the one piece, guys. You found mm. it. Um, Finally! Thanks, After like 3,000 my... episodes. <laughs> I've been lucky. That you know what that tracks for Mira though. She's definitely three thousand episodes old, at least. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, if Mira's life was anime, it would have one piece level. <laughs> oh episodes. yeah. For no reason other than that there's just weird stuff happening constantly. Yeah. Um, but yes, it's this kind of this like very deep. Um, orange and bronze color. Um, you can all give me uh, arcana or nature checks if you want to figure what? out what this Fuck is. Me. 19. Wow. Eight. Four. Hang on. We're going to use our past life shit. Cause that's you, don't want, you don't want uh, Chester to beat you on this. Come on. <laughs> Let me tell you a little about this, Linga, <laughs> if you're unfamiliar. Oh my god, Chester mansplaining. <laughs> <laughs> As he manspreads. Oh so, man. So she also got a 19 then. Oh. Yes. Um, so this is actually somewhat strange um it looks from just kind of looking at it objectively like it's a solid piece of orichalcum um generally orichalcum is metal um not solid stone like this so you would assume it could potentially be a solid piece of orichalcum ore um with kind of the veins of metal running through it but even still, that doesn't necessarily explain how it's in such a perfect shape. Um, whether it was carved from a, a solid block, you're not entirely sure. Um, but uh, let's double check which... Oh, you both did Arcana. Fine. You're both picking up heavy magical vibes off it. Um you get the sense of, um, given that it's not metal in and of itself, but as you kind of look through the large crack in the center, you can see the veins of metal running through it. It's almost like the stone is uh, in almost entirely suffused with this kind of pure orichalcum essence somehow. Um, you would know as well, uh, orichalcum is used quite regularly when people are able to get their hands on it. Um, it is quite expensive as a material, but it can be used to make non-magical armor and weapons, um, which are able to either output or absorb large amounts of force. So above table, um, you can... If you're wearing orichalcum armor, uh, it reduces force damage you take, um, and you can use it to craft ar magical armor like armor of force resistance. Um, if you make a weapon out of it, it does extra force damage. Um, and then you can also use it to craft other kind of anti-magic items like a uh, ring of mind shielding. Uh, with oh. that without flooding his brain he's he's <laughs> one thing that he's uh, curious about and he uh, uh looks to uh, mira mira i just out of curiosity this is a very Hi. like magic stone kind of thing is yeah. there any uh ley lines around here oh yeah i forgot to make that thanks for remembering chester <laughs> uh uh mira while she does not need to decides to cr like squat down and yeah, Squat? I say it wrong on Squat. Squat. I say it wrong on purpose because it's funny. She That's squats. The noise down. she makes when she squats. Squat. Squat. <laughs> Squat. I mean like that deep down, like deep down, like slob squat, uh like level and puts her hands on the ground 
and is like, mm, ley lines. Um, <laughs> ley lines. Show me. Show me ley lines. Um, Reveal. <laughs> um, yeah. There is, as Mira starts to focus, um, a very large, uh, very powerful ley line. Um, you can see it's kind of running almost through the street, effectively. Um, and given what you've seen of Hepetra so far, it's almost like it effectively kind of bisects Hepetra perfectly through the middle and passes perfectly through the center of this stone. And yes, I do need to get the ley line map of Silent Isle finished and there's sent a, over to Steph. <laughs> there's a big one right here. <laughs> oh, Nelly. <laughs> and it runs right through the center of Hepatra. It's, it's real big. She's like, it's thick. It's so... Oh, Lord, he's thick. It, it's a thick little ley... Well, it's not little. It's a thick, big old ley line. It's connected right to this rock. She touches it. Mm. Mm. Well, no, she does not touch the rock, but she's like, the rock. Very curious. Right. Can we touch the rock, Mitch? Do the guards seem uh, you like... Can, you can see people. Are there any are... signs? Okay. There is not a don't touch the rock <clears throat> sign. Um, there is a can you smell what the rock is cooking sign. <laughs> um, but you can see the That's on the sun facing <laughs> side and people yeah. are throwing eggs at it. Um, yeah. You can see they are allowing people to kind of step forward and place a hand on it. Any more than that does draw careful looks from the guards. Um, and they are keeping an eye on the people who are touching it. But for the most part, touching does seem to be allowed. No heavy petting, though. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> Linger's going to go touch it. Okay. And so is Rip. And if Rip can get away to try to climb inside that crack, he's going <laughs> to. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> um, the crack is not large enough to allow Rip inside. What about just like an arm? Uh, a leg? Give me a stealth check for Rip. Or a sleight of hand, your they're, choice. They're, they're, well, I mean, it's a, it's a flat 20 no matter what. Um, <laughs> I won't make any of the crude jokes that I could make about what Rip is doing to this crowd. You should. You should make them but, <laughs> jokes. But just know that they're there. Yeah. A 15. Okay. Um, to go shoulder watch. deep into your crack. Hmm. What? You guys <laughs> watch as... Linger just kind of nonchalantly walks up, places a hand on the the cracked monolith, um, and and uh, Rip just stealthily skitters along her arm. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's not hiding from you guys; it's other people he's hiding from. And you know, I I imagine Linger isn't too bothered about the party seeing. <laughs> um, yeah, no. And you guys watch as um, Rip firmly inserts his hand into the crack um <laughs> before really just firmly kind of grass. <laughs> just really digging around deep inside the crack as far as the crack oh will allow God. him to be honest what um, is this like a fucking is this like a proctologist <laughs> Rip has a lot of skills, you know? Are Maybe. you looking for the fucking prostate? Like, what's happening? In, I don't know. In I don't before know what's we in get there. Rip smart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um, Damn. I guess as, too early. As uh, Rip's arm enters the crack and makes contact with the center of the monolith, um, there's a slight moan. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, uh, it glows do, danger. Um, <laughs> danger. <laughs> Stranger danger. You do linger um, in the Boom. same arm that Rip is reaching in with. You can feel um, a tingle. Um, it's mm. akin to pins and needles, which I imagine is a sensation Linger has not had for a very long time outside of magic stuff. Um, this is a great moment for both of them. <laughs> um, there doesn't seem to be anything adverse happening. Okay. Um, but Rip is very clearly in 
contact with almost like the magical core of this monolith. Um, and as okay. such, you can feel it's almost like the power is kind of any what power might kind of cause this to light up is almost kind of flowing up the arm and kind of hits the shoulder before flowing back down into the monolith. Um, can you okay. give me a very... Actually, no. Can Rip give me a very quick... Um, I mean, it'll be a flat d20 anyway, but... Uh, yeah. Charisma saving. It's fun for us. <laughs> a three. Cool. Um... <laughs> With your shared connection with Rip, um, mm -hmm. you start to feel like Rip's essence is being drawn into the monolith. Oh. Well, then she'll dismiss him. <laughs> there is a... As he Oh my god, he died. Um, <laughs> hmm. There is a, a brief moment of worry, though, Linga. Um, in that split second as you're dismissing him, Mm -hmm. You see, kind of from the shoulder down, it's almost like his arm is starting to disappear, and that's when Linga's like, nope! <laughs> yeah, she actually says no as part of the dismissing him. Nope! <laughs> <laughs> Not <t> today. <laughs> She's just gonna try to nonchalantly turn back towards her friends and... What happened, Linger? You said no. Oh, the monolith tried to eat Rip. Um, oh! <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my God. Zzz. God, zzz. Yeah. Or my particular well, it's kind God. Of... Sorry. Yeah. It's... <sighs> well, you know, stuff. it happens. But he'll be fine. What? We'll let him recover okay. for a little Magic. while. Magic. You know. Magic. Good. What That's are you going to do? It's, it's sort of like a vacuum effect, you know, when you uncork something. If there's pressure on one side and the other and it zooms in um <clears throat> a magic vacuum not the Lord the cleaning kind an unexplored yes. crack what yeah <laughs> i'm sorry you just introduced a lot of concepts to me at once and i'm very I'm having a really hard time lining them all up together so if you could just explain this to me he entered a crack unprotected it's, and paid the price. It's um, like if you have a glass of hot water and a glass of okay. cold water and you touch right. them, the one glass will get colder and the other one will get warmer because the, the heat from one is being pulled into the other. Absolutely. That, yeah, like 100%. That. Mira's thinking about like two cups like this. <laughs> I mean, it's still mm. kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Just slower. Um, Chester's going to go up to one of our guards. <laughs> uh, pardon me, sir. May I make an inquiry? Um, yeah, sure. It is a um, Dwergar female. Um, oh, my. Oh, just, just your time. Oh, my <laughs> God. Average Dwergar height. Um, these very kind of piercing emerald green eyes. Um, she's got kind of like a single braid um, ponytail. Mitch, keep in mind he doesn't down. have pants on. What are you doing? The hair is dyed quite a nice deep purple. Um, oh, jeez. And she's wearing, mm. similar to the previous that you saw um, at the landing dock, very kind of almost spartan style armor um she's got a spear um and a shield and she yes what is your inquiry i i am wondering uh a couple of things this uh, monolith here uh how does it uh, activate like if i were to go up to it and say i am here to destroy the city would it uh, would it do anything do you think Keep in mind, oh, let me just specify, I'm not here to destroy the city. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, 
I'm... I don't know why she suddenly got so deep. Um... <laughs> I am yeah, it's what we do here at the yeah. um, <laughs> I am by no means uh, magically inclined, but from my knowledge of the monolith, uh, I expect it would sense your intention. If you were just saying that you are here to destroy the city, like right now, it wouldn't light up. Okay. But when we have had people attacking the walls uh, or people sneaking in through the sewers, it has lit up. Oh. Okay, yeah, that, that uh, that's good. And and when it, it, it that's what it does, right? It lights up like it doesn't send out a laser beam at these uh, infiltrators, that sort of thing. Uh, no, unfortunately, it is not a defense system, more of a mm. warning system. Uh, but we do have a number of mages who are uh, linked to the monolith. So when it starts to glow and warn us, they are warned themselves and can magically send messages to our and they generals. and then they know what the warning is in regards to not just some sort of vague oh bad things are happening all right i <laughs> don't know for certain to be honest uh, all right i'm just a curious uh individuals all curious about uh, how long you've worked here what time you get off you know all these sorts if of things if you're single <laughs> wait <laughs> sir we don't have time for dates <laughs> <laughs> You gotta make time. I guess that's fair, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, anyway, sorry, I, I, I don't want to keep you from your appointed rounds. That's all right, I'm uh, just keeping an eye on the monolith this morning, so... I hear nice, you. easy morning for me. As long as you're not <laughs> here to destroy the city, of course. She <laughs> chuckles. She's bringing that up. Yeah, no, we gave up that plan a long time ago. <laughs> we have fun. This um, guy. This guy. No, but really, if you are here to destroy the city, I will stab you in the throat. Uh, anyway. Yeah, no. It's valid. I guess. But how are you I'm enjoying just... Hapetra? So far, so far, good. It's great. This is this is a very interesting. Pl oh, are you just talking to Chester? No. Uh, oh, I'm the wall of you. I will quite happily it's... converse with all of you. <laughs> it's I great. Don't know. We could we could let you and Chester have yeah, some time. We have some things to pill around town. Yeah, um, I'm an expert. We're actually. Pillar. We're here all, all day, and I believe we're staying the night. We're not, so uh -huh. there's time for Chester Are you to enjoy himself. Me for your friend, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> she it's is kind of kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, she's not really good. She's a, she's a I... great wingman, but not not right now. <laughs> she kind of looks Chester up and down. I mean, I'm not opposed, <laughs> but I'm busy right hey! now. Oh. <laughs> Does she, uh, does her eyes linger on the lack of pants? No. <laughs> Used to it. Just another day in Hepetra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Oh my god. <laughs> He's still a little gun shy from being, you know, framed for many multiple things by a uh, woman who looks somewhat like this. <laughs> you know, the best uh... way to get over someone is... To get, to get under, under someone or yeah, yeah, to get under, yeah, something along those lines. Um, oh, that's yeah, Lindsay advice. Off. That's not like her. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um, but yeah, the uh, the monolith, monoliths imposingly in the background. Um, what would you guys like to do? Uh, before we walk off, Linger will get a strip of paper from her book and, and write down where they're staying. I still don't know what I'm doing, but this is where we're staying. And she'll give it to the guard and then follow. <laughs> she folds it up and just tucks it into the top of her armor. And that's her good deed for this century. <laughs> now back mm. to the slaughter. <laughs> Finally. Free conscience. Forever. <laughs> Points at someone, they explode on the street. Ah! 
<laughs> um, <laughs> so, what's everyone doing? <clears throat> Apart from making plans to do dirty things with Dwergar ladies. Mm. That was a good question. Well, typically most two of us need to eat regularly so we could oh yeah food we could make our shopping list for the local shopper man um oh what about those uh debates maybe we swing by and listen oh, we could, oh, yeah. i would love to listen take. to a good debate oh, yeah that sounds good all right why don't we do that it was like right here too if i do recall Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, it should be very near here. That was very close, wasn't it? It is indeed. It is, in fact, about five minutes down the road. <laughs> All right. Wow. All right, well, um, you can exactly. actually kind of see the, the peak of the building. To the forum. <laughs> okay. You know what's sad? I can't write on... Um, I can't write on Warden's back because it's too hot. Yeah. Yeah. You'll burn. Bum, bum, it won't burn. It will burn. What was that guard's name again? Uh, the guard's name was not actually given. Damn it! <laughs> All right. No Ooh. one asked her name. Mm, I'm just gonna go. write down "hottie" with the body. That's all she's getting. <laughs> Ooh, um, girl. She did have very dangerous-looking gloves on, though. So. You know. <laughs> with danger gloves. <laughs> um, but the gloves are just for Chester. Later. Ooh, yeah, they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, cool. So, as you guys head to the forum, why don't we head to the bathroom for a little break? Hey, I love a break. Because mm. I need to pee. So we'll see you back here <laughs> in ten minutes. It's with words. All right. Yeah. Break screen. He break.
And we're back. Hello. Uh, we're Hi. back to the streets of Hepetra as our party enter the forum. Mm. The forum. Bum, 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 bum. You head inside, and it's it's sort of like there's this almost like a small kind of antechamber. Um, I don't think that's the right word, but I'm rolling with it. It was the first one that popped into my head. Um, <laughs> before you, I don't question you. Before you kind of emerge out into um, what is effectively just kind of one large grand hall. Um, the forum itself from the outside is this large kind of Parthenon style building. Um, Parthenon not to be confused with Pantheon, which I do sometimes say by accident instead of Parthenon. Two very different things. Um, <laughs> very easy to get mixed up. But as you head inside, um, similar to a lot of the other grandeur of Hapetra, um, it's this kind of very smooth, well-kept sandstone floor um, with these um, kind of marbled walls um, and large uh, marble pillars that are kind of supporting the very ornate uh, ceiling which has various kind of scenes of what appear to be um, either the history of Hapetra itself or potentially even the history of the Silent Isles just depicted along the ceiling in painting form. Um, you see there's kind of war, there's debate being held in various halls, there's the building of various cities, the building of Hapetra itself. Um, more war. More war. Um, strangely, all the war you see never changes. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> there is also kind of towards the center of this uh, mural, for lack of a better word, um, there is what appears to be a depiction of the War of the Gods in and of itself. Um, you can see kind of the depiction. There's not... Um, uh, well, there is, sorry. Um, the kind of eight figures of the um, Divine Council and the figures of the Fallen Lords, these two kind of opposing um, governing structures of the gods that are all depicted in the forms that it's generally agreed that um, these gods, if they visit the mortal planes, take, whether it be kind of a more mortal form, or, for example, Atalania, who is depicted as a giant eagle. Um, you can see them kind of almost squaring up to each other in this picture with kind of lightning crashing around them. You can see depictions all around it of the Silent Isles being cracked and broken by the power of this meeting of these two forces. Um, Silent Isle, there's only one. Yes. No. Similar to <laughs> mm -hmm. various other locations in Eroth, which are similarly pockmarked and scarred, thanks to the War of the Gods. Um, towards the back of this grand hall and almost like the end of the mural, um, you can see a depiction of the building of the walls around Hepetra. Um, and as you're kind of taking this all in, it is quite noisy in here. Um, there is kind of a low din of people kind of talking a little bit amongst themselves. Um, but there are, there is kind of like a the uh, kind of tiered seating that you can see people are sat at, they're talking amongst themselves quietly, but loud enough that it's causing some noise, but quiet enough that you can see uh, almost like a courtyard effectively left in the center, this kind of large square area where um, you can see there is a uh, an elf man who is giving quite an impassioned speech from the looks of things. 
to the crowd who are sort of discussing amongst themselves and it's 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 sort of like as as warden would be aware um he is putting forward whatever side of potentially the debate that's currently going on he is on or he is opening a new debate by putting forward his argument um and as you come kind of within earshot of this you can hear it is completely unacceptable that a large power such as Hapetra can live in fear of one single individual. They cannot be allowed to claim more of the territories in the Silent Isle without being checked in some way. What are we doing to stop this? Nothing. We are cowering in our cities. We are cowering in our towns. And they are simply getting away with it. This cannot continue. But that is all the time I have been allowed for now. And he kind of steps to the side to allow other people Chester to start starts putting clapping. forward their case. Sorry? Chester starts clapping. Yeah, this <laughs> guy knows what he's talking about. I like the cut of your jib, sir. Mira um, also claps, but she doesn't... She's doing it to Chester and she <laughs> thinks he's a good example. The, um... Mm -hmm. The elf in and of himself um, was quite tall for an elf. Um, no. Strikingly so. Um, no. He's wearing kind of plain-ish blue robes with a quite subtle but noticeable gold trim. Um, he's got kind of shaved on one side and then long down the other side um, kind of oh. platinum hair. Um can everyone give me a quick perception check? Oh, baby, yes. <laughs> That's a six. <laughs> That's four. Thirty twenty. Distracted. Um. Has Lingo Dog has no? Cool. There it is. Five. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank God for the no. Right. I had to. <laughs> had to switch gears. Pin. Mouse. Pin. Mouse. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, I was platinum hair. I was <laughs> getting everything down. Subtle gold that you can notice. Chester. Hot as fuck. Um, Rim. What else? You oh, can yeah. see the elf is wearing um, an amulet. It's somewhat obscured uh -oh. by the fold of the robes, kind of the way they sit. Um, but you can see just enough of it that the face of the amulet seems to have a very intricate maze-like design carved into it. Oh! Oh, you were going to say Ooh. sun god. <clears throat> oh, that would have been bad, huh? Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. It would have been oh, very bad. <laughs> uh, do I know what that is? Um, I will say, give me a history check, and given Chester's background, you can have advantage. Ooh! Uh, looks like I need it. Mm. Oh, 14. Um, at first you kind of take no real notice of it. You know, you've seen those sorts of things all around. It's, you know, a maze from the looks of things. It could just be a fun design to have on an amulet. But with some of the circles that you'd run in, in your past life, um, it was somewhat of a rumor, um, but the name of the Maze Guild springs to mind. Um, mm. Very much a kind of thieves guild, Illuminati-like <laughs> oh! um, <laughs> system, as far as Chester would be aware. Um, it's never really confirmed as far as Chester would know or be aware whether they actually do exist or not um, but it's very much a kind of almost like an underground society from what you would know um, you've probably come across amulets of people claiming <laughs> to be part of this guild but as I say given that there's no real connection that Chester has seen to note that the guild even exists they're usually kind of laughed at or called into question and it's the sort of thing of like if you were actually part of such a secretive guild you wouldn't be walking around openly talking about it so uh, bye bye 
Bye-bye. Hmm. Uh, Fucking leave, says I'd say as well, with a, with a 14, you'd probably also have heard the rumor that they operate uh, under Thistlewood, mainly, um, which is the capital of the top half of Azith, the verdant expanse. Um, so if we okay, actually switch gonna... back to the world map quickly, just look to out. his uh, companions and... Uh... I, th I think maybe we should talk to this individual. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, I think so. He's so tall. This would. I mean, mm -hmm. he's kind of tall, I guess. He's not that tall. <laughs> yeah, he's not. <laughs> um, definitely not chest at all. But he is tall for an elf. Chester uh, okay. has to squat down to talk to Mira. <laughs> um, I uh, can't hear you. <laughs> He's going to uh, stride up to this uh, individual and uh, greet him. Uh, oh, hello there, sir. I very much enjoyed your speech. I was wondering if I could pick your brain a little bit. Uh, as he's saying that, he's going to try in Thieves Can't, uh, Thieves Can't to uh, sort of say something along the lines of uh, Maze Guild, eh? <laughs> um... There is a uh, kind of sideways glance towards you, um, as he... Uh, it is a, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Gunnar Glory Speaker. Wait a minute. Oh. In a glorious speech it was, Gunnar Glory Speaker. I am Chester Fields. This is Linga. This is Warden. This is Mira. And this... Hi. Oh, wait. Rip's not there. I almost... <laughs> I normally um, introduce him, but he's, I, know, I remember he's not there. <clears throat> it is... Uh, uh, yes, thank you for your comments on my speech. It is quite an important uh, situation that is facing our fair city. Um, and in Thieves Can't kind of back at you, you get the... Uh, mm. Depends who's asking. <laughs> but there's the recognition that you're clearly likely not with the furs if you're speaking to him in thieves camp because yeah. okay, that's very cool. much like when they're doing it it's like what up fellow kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah um now an individual one singular in power like this does not seem like a good situation uh who is it uh, specifically we are sort of new to the uh to the aisle who is it you're talking about? And uh, I'm curious what gives them the right or the ability to uh, wield this power. Well, that is something uh, my organization and myself are wondering ourselves. Um, from what I know, the name is somewhat of a taboo around here. Um, needless to say, uh, this is... Uh, quite a high up individual, uh, very prominent figure, and you're very much getting through in all of this. Um, kind of thieves can't references to a tower um, being a way of referring to this individual. Uh, mm -hmm. Although the name in and of itself has not been passed down to me. Uh, I just know by reputation. Um, as someone else kind of steps forward onto the debate platform and we recognize what you are saying but the fact remains that the places which have complied have seen peace, justice and prosperity under his rule. How can we not Followed by this example where everywhere he goes there is prosperity, there is good tidings. Things are changed for the better. I am now Italian, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Mamma mia! <laughs> Mamma mia. And he, um, the, the elf <clears throat> gives a very stern squint towards this individual who is now very impassionately speaking to the audience about why one should submit to the tower. Just to, like, fuck with that guy a little bit, Chester's gonna, like, tap him on the shoulder with his mage hand. 
Give me a sleight of hand check. Because <laughs> there is still meanwhile, a little bit of casting involved. Meanwhile, no, it's uh, it's actually not in his case. It it's all uh, 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 telepath. Oh, fair enough. In that case, then. There is no sign other than Chester looking towards this guy <laughs> um, as he stumbles over his words. Um, but yes, Rich. meanwhile... I was just going to say, how dare you not give me a breath to react to that, sir. <laughs> you talked right over that reveal. I am looking down. How Both dare Lindsay, you? Lindsay and I were looking down. <laughs> Which reveal? You revealed it, and we go, You know. Wait. Gun art. No. Suddenly gun art. And you don't even give a breath. Oh, is this a, 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 a campaign uh, one? Uh, yeah. Individual? Yeah, it is. And he had to drop out halfway through the life stuff. Okay, uh, cool. Hey, did Mira ever hear this guy's name? Oh, I'm sorry, Lindsay. Uh, no, because Mir uh, Mary was already gone because... I met you once. Well, jo she wouldn't have had time to talk about him because almost immediately her best friend was murdered and then I had to send her off because it just wasn't fun playing someone that sad. Understandable. So, anyway, but Gunnar, <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> Much less sweaty it's, it's than the familiar, but I don't remember it. <laughs> Uh, anyway. So wait, you don't recognize him then? Like you no. recognize no. him from? Okay, but okay, like Linger doesn't. Okay. No, this was just Lindsay needed a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and of course, all of our fans from yes. season one. Season one, yeah. All those guys, all of them, and those who want to be fans, go back and listen to campaign one. You should, so you'll know the reference. It's good, yeah. And you'll meet Semarel as well, that Mira was fan oh, like over a few sessions ago. He's the great. Oh, He's I great. love Sam. Available so on good. YouTube and all your podcast platforms, I assume. Yes. Uh, yes. Sam is our king. King Sam. Um, Sam for president. Best, best paladin ever. Truly. Uh, I, I think uh, perhaps uh, a, uh, if you are not a voice to the uh, situation, we could uh, go somewhere a little more private and uh, talk of matters of import such as this. He um, kind of looks you up and down. Do I have any assurances that uh, you and your friends won't murder me in some dark alley somewhere? What? Uh, Why would we do that? See, she doesn't even contemplate such a thing. And you have my word as a fellow of adventure in proportions, as well as someone in the know, if you know. And then in Thieves' Cant, uh my uh, uh, honor among thieves word as well. He, yeah. um, Nods. Very well. Uh, in that case, uh, given the nature of the topics that I have been bringing up, probably best not to be seen with me out in public. But, uh, Verdant Goblet in 25 minutes. Uh, he looks at his companions for... Yeah. Yeah, we're nuts. Very well, sir. We shall meet you there. Very well, that gives me time to... Uh, destroy this man in argument. Good luck! <laughs> Good luck Cheering you. you on! Thank you. And he just kind of turns his attention back to the... Um, this just kind of regular human man, Jackie Daytona, who is passionately debating um, as to why it's a good thing to submit to exactly what Mr. Glory Speaker was arguing against. I so got that reference. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, Chester debates casting silence on his head. <laughs> That'd be fucking funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> Buddy <Yeah>. does. <laughs> so what would you guys like to do then? Uh, Sounds good. Like the oh. we're, we're rolling into the rest and say, it looks like the high power has more, has more influence here than I originally expected. It does seem that way, and everyone's sort of uh, nervous to uh, discuss anything revolving around them, which makes me think maybe they have ears and eyes everywhere. Uh... Trust, trust no one, and he gives a side eye to a mirror. <gasps> <laughs> Can I even trust myself? Above you could be one of them and not even <gasps> know it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god, what if I'm on the tower? <laughs> oh no, wait, I'm very tall. I could be the high tower. Oh god, I might why be they the short me. tower. Oh, oh, yeah, what if you, the bad guy was the friends we made <laughs> along the way? <laughs> Come here, doggy. Oh. Oh. So uh, I was just going to say, we could uh, head there now, maybe get a drink, get settled in so it doesn't look like we were coming there to meet him. There you go. All right, first round's Sounds only. like a good idea to me. <gasps> but since we're going to the Verdant Goblin. Goblet. <laughs> yes, Verdant Goblin is uh, in a different part of the world, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> okay, you head to the Verdant Goblet. Um, it is quite some way across uh, Hepetra. Um but you uh, you head in and it is pretty rough on the inside frankly um, it's oh God. not the most amazingly lit tavern um, as you kind of walk in and look around, there is towards the back corner kind of like a, a circled off sand pit almost where there's just, uh, from the looks of it, a half elf and a half orc just bare knuckle fighting um, with a small oh. crowd of onlookers just kind of watching and talking amongst each other. Um, there are various tables of individuals that just kind of look up at you dubiously as you all <laughs> enter it's not quite the all the chatter stops as new people walk in type of tavern but it's very much that people look anytime someone comes in through the door um and you can see um behind the bar is um what looks to be a uh, hobgoblin um and everyone kind of being waited on by goblins, from the looks of things. Interesting. Is there an uh, empty booth, perhaps, tucked yep. away? Certainly. In fact, in this tavern, there seem to be more booths than actual just out-in-the-open tables. <laughs> <laughs> I love a booth. Huh. IRL as well. I'm gonna go booth. Okay. All right, well. Booth is good. Uh, shall uh, I get us some drinks? Any requests? Yeah. Yeah. What are those requests? Oh, oh request. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sorry, am I? I was also things? waiting for it after the yeah. I was like, oh, cool. She's got a request. She remembers right. the um, drinks that have been mentioned before. That's cool. Orange juice, please. Orange juice, all right. Warden, what would you like? I'll just stick a water. Water for Warden, WW. That's how I'll remember that. Hmm. Uh, Linga? Um, I will just have what you are having. And all we'll right. bring Rip back and he can drink it. Okay. <laughs> uh, he'll go to the bar and uh, order an orange juice, a water, and several drinks mixed together in the same glass. Okay. Oh, jeez. Which one day he's going to go into the bar and they'll be like, oh, you mean the Chesterfields? <laughs> yeah. That is one way to do it. <laughs> it is. Um, okay. Easily done. Um, and runs you two silver for the lot. Here's one goal. 
Falling on a budget. There is a uh, a moment where this hobgoblin just looks down at the gold piece in a little bit of confusion up at you and just... <laughs> I like you. You yeah, can you come here more often. <laughs> What's your name, sir? I like you too. Uh, Jackie Daytona. Um, <laughs> all uh -huh. bartenders from now on are Jackie Daytona. Um, human bartender. Regular human bartender. Uh, can you please open? Thank you. There we go. Um, no. He, uh, <laughs> he kind of pings the gold coin up into the air and catches it. My friend, I am Mavrag. Uh, Rob, it's a delight to meet you. I'm Chester Fields. Chester, with pockets like those, the pleasure is all ours. Welcome to the Verdant Goblet. And he just, as one of the goblins are kind of running past, he just snatches them by the back of the collar, lifts them up. Whatever this man wants, bring it to him. Drops him. Yes, sir. Runs back. <laughs> He bows, returns with the drinks. Cool. I'm on. <laughs> they seem to like you. Well, you know, gold will have that effect on people. Hmm. And, uh, you know, a charisma of, say, like 18 out of 20, that, that also helps. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, I don't know what that means. Um, one of the goblins comes kind of skittering over to your table with a tray. Beggings your pardons, hot towel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hot towel. Um, it, yeah. It's it's sure. very much not the cleanest looking towel you've ever seen in your life, and it's clearly just been dipped in some hot water. You can see no one else in this tavern getting this kind of treatment, and he just kind of bows and backs away as you take the towels. Wait, before you go, um, yes. I need do you have a, I need a small brazier just a little or a bowl you don't mind me putting fire on. I need something. He uh, kind of scratches his head turns around and just kind of runs over to the fireplace grabs this brazier that's kind of sat in the fireplace you can hear the sizzling on the skin just empties the coals out into oh the fireplace and comes running back over to you will this suffice is Ow. his skin burning <laughs> yes please yes more than suitable just, just kind of down. places it on the floor okay so Bow. Heat it backs away you run and... your... Wait, no, let me give you medical advice. Put your hands in oil, like cold oil first and then run it under cold water. So your so your your blisters won't blister. Nods emphatically and just sprints back behind the bar and through kind of like a swinging door. Something that Bye. something smells really good all of a sudden. I don't know. I am hungry, I don't know. No! <laughs> oh dear. Oh no! I'm so hungry, I can eat a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just gobble it all up. <laughs> um, cool. So as the brazier cools down for Linga to touch it, <laughs> um, are you guys doing anything while you wait? Anything you want to discuss amongst yourselves, or are we just time skipping until he enters the tavern? I mean, she was going to re-summon Rip, but now I have to wait for this other thing to happen. <laughs> so, just chilling, waiting for Scalding Hot Metal to cool off. And just... Wait, I can help. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Mira's like, I, I, can, I can help. Hold on. I definitely... It's also, like, much larger than what she meant, so she's just kind of like, maybe I'll wait. I don't know. Oh, maybe we'll get a real big rip. It'll be like, like that would be great. Tall. Yeah. Mira's a half-length size rep. <laughs> Mira's like, I definitely have something. And she sits there. Uh, she busts out her book. And um, that doesn't help because there's nothing in the fucking book. 
she's not a wizard. <laughs> no, but she's a pack of the tome, um, warlock, so she do got the tome. Uh, it, no, nothing. She's like, so, no, I got shape water. I can shape water. You want me to shape some water? Uh, that's, no, we're fine. It'll just make steam and it'll be a whole. She's already Jeez. more than I meant it to be. It's, it's all right. Mm-hmm. I'll just wait. I get, I get that. I get, it happens to me all the time. It does not happen to her all the time. Yeah, it does cool down quite quickly. Uh, fortunately, enough. Mira blows on it. It immediately. <laughs> Done. I'm sorry. Did that offend you? <laughs> um. But yeah, it does cool down surprisingly quickly. Um, really good to be able to use. Um. Uh, I think maybe Chester would uh, want to ask Warden, like, uh, what do you, uh, what do you think uh, is going on over there in Belkale? Belkale. Like none of this was happening when you were here last. It's sort of a more recent development, from the sounds of it. Indeed. Hmm. Uh, what, what, what was it like when you were there? Well, Belkia is my home. It was. It is hard to describe, but... In a way, it was much like um, a Petra, in a way. Ooh. We share a lot from coming with them, but... Belkia always felt more independent, in a way. A Petra has to host most of the other uh, cities. They're a little more... I say the verse where Belki has much more of its own sort of identity. Hmm. But. That makes it uh, even more interesting. They were like independent and now the it, it almost sounds like they've been taken over by this individual. Indeed. Hmm. I don't like that at all. The Out of character, this individual, is this the person that goes by the high tower? Is that, do we have like a term for the person? The person you're looking this? for goes by the tower. The tower? Yeah. Okay. Just adding to my notes. And they live in the high tower. The Ooh. tower in the tower. It's in the... I'm getting, I'm getting crazy, guys. I'm actually putting it in the group journal. What? <laughs> what happened? Sorry, I had to pee. Mira left, had to pee. Didn't say anything to anybody. We were only having a moment, Stephanie. You come in, it's like, I had to pee. <laughs> That's Hightower from Police Academy, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, it's probably going ru- like hell. Did I ruin the moment? Yeah, but it's fine. No! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I should also say that Belica was when I left it. It was nearly destroyed. Oh, how? That's a very good question. Something, something attacked it. Scrolls back through my chat with Ethan. Uh, where's it gone yeah I'm forcing you both (laughs) sorry (laughs) hmm Uh, I wonder if that uh, destruction and seemingly uh, rebuilding coincides with this uh, tower high tower individual uh, gaining influence it's funny yeah many many things to ponder I'm looking forward to getting there Actually, how far 
I don't know. We don't have the grid now. Is that like a couple of, day, couple of days? Um, you don't have the grid, no. But um, it is actually the shard measuring is to scale. So if you click and hold until it pings and then draw basically an arrow from Herpetra oh. to... 21 miles. <laughs> well, that's like a day. Yeah. I managed um, to I managed to do the maths and scale the map so that this map actually represents the travel distances. Nice. So Look at no you. Grid. Does um, my map that I purchased say anything about these ruins, these Stonehenge-looking ruins? Uh, they are shown on there, but it doesn't mention anything about no. Uh, what, do you know what uh, these ruins are? They kind of look like Stonehenge, you know, from uh, Scotland, I guess. <laughs> um, Mitch, would I? Let me um, bring you this. Give me a history check. Let's see what Warden's databanks remember. Scanning. <laughs> hey. It's unfortunately it's stored on his hard drive, so it's taking a while to boot up. The rest of him's on solid state, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah. Unfortunately, you don't, you can't at the moment recall anything around those ruins. Mm. Uh, I only ask because, you know, we're headed that direction. I see some crazy looking runes on my map. I'm um, like, yeah, that's kind of on the way, isn't it? I'd say you probably can't remember how they were referred to or what the name was, but you might have a vague memory that they were um, used by, definitely by Hepetra and uh, Bellica as kind of like a proving grounds um, for children coming of age and other such similar ceremonies yeah um well we do not know who made it i always remember that it was sort of like used for outings for children coming of age we normally host uh sort of rites and rituals there Ooh. interesting interesting People say it was built by the plasmoids, but, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joke's on you, it was built by Mira. <laughs> it's just Ooh. forgotten. Just, just, yeah, she has no fucking idea. The Forgotten Ruins. Wow. Good name. <clears throat> yeah. Also, why is Warden's theme, like, so sad? Because he's it's a very dramatic sad boy. And yeah. Emotional, I'm a, like him. I'm a fucking cry, yo. <laughs> um, it's, it's somber, but it's like it's brave, you know. Hopeful, yeah. yeah it's just like a brighter um, future. <laughs> I think that was also the part missed by Steph because she was away peeing. Was Warden mentioning that Bellica was destroyed last time he was here? Um, so no! people talking about it being kicking again being ruled over is kind of weird yeah. hmm. are you okay warden I think I will be able when we figure out what's going on Mira like tentatively reaches out a hand to touch him I'm well he's cooled off now yeah mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I wasn't even here for that. This is the fucking music. I'm gonna fuck going on in my life. <laughs> um. But with that, as everyone's kind of settling in and digesting this new information from Warden. Um, the door to the tavern opens once more, the heads all turn and look, uh, the elf strides in, sees you guys at the booth and just kind of heads straight over. A really tall elf. <laughs> Are you saying that to him? I just say it, she just says it out loud. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's a pretty tall elf. <laughs> he chuckles that. I, uh... I get that a lot. Um, can everyone give me an investigation check? Yeah, totally. Mm. <laughs> Thirteen. Oh, no, I'm so bad at this. 
Six. Seven! <laughs> oh, sorry, nine. Wait, what was it? Eight! Wow! Cool. This is good. Um, Finger is busy resummoning. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It's a whole thing. Okay. The elf uh, kind of sits down at the table. Um, he doesn't sit kind of particularly close to anyone, um, but Warden. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, actually, let me double check everyone's passive perceptions. Mine's um, 14. Yes, so Mira, um, and then Warden with his investigation check. <laughs> um, there is a definite kind of creak to the chair that he sits on um which is certainly a, a much heavier creak than a thin elf of his stature would usually produce sitting on such a chair um but he just kind of sits down um kind of close enough that he's with the group but a little distance away and just kind of places his elbows on the table and leans in so mr fields how is it that I can help you? Well, I don't know if it's so much that you can help me as we can potentially help one another. Go on. I and my compatriots here very much uh, had feelings towards that speech you gave and the thought of one poison wielding such influence does not sit well with us. So, in our travels, we are the sorts who often aid in this sort of balance of power, let's say. And, should you have information that would aid us in investigating this imbalance, perhaps we can come to some sort of arrangement where we help one another, right? these wrongs he um uh, certainly uh i represent a uh, powerful group of people um, that's not to say that we're never open to help and certainly if uh and not necessarily in these words as such, but for lack of better phrasing, if there are other people who can dirty their hands with this work without it coming back to us, that is certainly something we would be interested in, yes. Well, it seems to be the sort of thing we get wrapped up in quite often, to be honest, so... Wouldn't be the voice time, and it probably won't be the last. There enough. Uh, oh, and as he's saying that, uh, he throws in a yeah, the maze guild in thieves camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's like a sly smile in your direction. Um, that's kind of like enough that you know he is regarding it, but he's not saying anything about it when he then kind of starts saying, uh, "We have operated in various." areas around Eroth for quite some time now. Uh, this tower, as he kind of says it slightly under his breath and kind of looks around the tavern, um, he is not necessarily new to this location, but certainly since the sacking of Belika, he began to grow in some influence and has risen since uh, a lot of people refer to it now as new Belika, the base of his operations as far as we understand it uh, but his influence has certainly been spread around uh, mm. to our knowledge uh, we don't know whether it began in Belika but certainly uh, the orcish settlement 
to the west, uh, Grogzalzik. They were one of the first to go. <laughs> they were one of the first to go. Uh, and subsequently, stories of orcish attacks on towns and cities across the Silent Isle began to rise. And it sort of continued in such fashion. Um, but everywhere that his influence, everywhere that these tales ended in places near ruin, his influence suddenly began to sprout up. Uh, there's been some talk of uh, a sun god. Uh, oh my god. We believe he is quite closely affiliated with the same. Uh, but we don't believe he works alone. There is simply no way someone so unknown could be producing such results so quickly. So would you say that, at least as far as you know, uh, these attacks are not... Uh, he's not the one doing these attacks, but he sort of sweeps in afterwards and cleans up. We believe he is inciting. That is our current intel so far. Uh, and then, as you say, he is there to sweep in, save the day. Swoop in, rather. Save the day. Sweep, uh, swoop, swoop. Uh, precisely. So, and also when you said the town uh, is done, what do you, or gone, what do you mean? Like the whole town? Oh, no, 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 it is of... still there. It was uh, one of the first that we believe came under the influence ah, of this tower. I see, I see. Uh, it, it is an orcish settlement, and suddenly, after there were rumors of the tower's involvement with the town, all of a sudden, rumors of orc attacks on surrounding towns began to rise, and subsequently, where the orcs attacked and were successful, rumors of the tower began to sprout. So what form of uh, attacks to these, well, attacks uh, take, is it always orcs or, just out of curiosity, is it ever sort of automaton looking uh, individuals? Uh, from what we know, uh, the intelligence that we have so far suggests that the uh, attack many years ago on Belika was carried out by um, these fusions almost of uh, person and machine. Um, we'd heard talk that the only way to defeat these monsters was to seek such help and potentially embrace such changes yourself and to fight fire with fire, as I believe they say in other areas of the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Fire Isle specifically. Yes. Um, um, but mm. there was only one such reported attack originally. It was... Uh, a large force force of uh, constructs that were incredibly well armed, incredibly well equipped, and incredibly well programmed to fight. Um, we'd heard some reports of people who had undergone a similar process to try and fight them back, and from what we hear, they were quite successful, but not successful enough to save Belika in and of itself. Um, following this, the constructs seemed to disappear. Then it was the orcs, and for a while it was only orc attacks. And now there are reports of these constructs once more. Very interesting. He uh, looks at his friends. Uh, what do you guys think so far? Warden will actually lean in. And. Have you seen any of these constructs? What was that, sorry? And have you seen any of these constructs? Uh, we have had uh, reports come in. I've not seen them myself, but uh, it was said that the ones which attacked Belika 
uh, were more uh, construct than uh, mortal being. Um, we have seen one or two of the others which were recovered by our organization. and They were uh, much more of a fusion between the two. Um, but from what we understand, uh, the initial attack on Belika was somewhat of a farce. Uh, the constructs which attacked Belika, we believe, were created by the tower, and those who then sought help from the tower to fight them back were subsequently turned into similar monsters. Mm. Well, Your story is almost correct. You have some knowledge of this? Initially, there was only one person from Belica who accepted his help. I see. Are they... Uh still around, still a threat? Are you aware of this? <laughs> Warden wants to incite him. Okay. What are you inciting for? I'm kind of looking to see, like, if, uh, I guess how he's taking to this new information, you know? Like, is mm -hmm. he genuinely surprised, or... Go for it. Uh, it's 13. Yeah, 13. Um, we're going to roll just to see, like, how <laughs> visible it is in general. Um, he does look somewhat surprised by this information. Um, it does seem that, as far as he was aware, um, the information was, as he'd said to you, multiple people rose up to protect Belika, and multiple people failed, so it is quite a surprise to him that there was only one initially, from what you can see. And he is genuinely asking if you're aware whether they're still around and are still a threat. They're not a threat. Fair enough. Um, from what we've heard, uh, those who accepted this help uh, they would then return, defend their town or their city, and they would fight back the constructs. Everyone was rejoicing, everyone was happy, the tower swoops in and is now the man of the hour, and those who accepted his help returned with him to Belika, to his tower, uh, to help fight future uh, menaces but we believe they are complicit in the other attacks. Mm. Well, were we to go to this uh, Malika, uh, are there ways in which we could, I don't want to use the word infiltrate necessarily, but uh, how do we go there and aid and not die? from a giant army that this guy is building up, seemingly? That is a very good question. We have been wondering much the same ourselves. Uh, from what we know so far, uh, new Belika in and of itself, uh, it's very much still just a town like any other, populated by non-construct people um, but certainly uh, the tower to its east is where we believe he is holding his forces uh -huh. uh, they have come out a few times to defend the city from a large enough threat but if you were to simply enter the location no one would bat an eyelid people enter and leave of free will quite regularly like they would in any other location 
on the side of the mm -hmm. diamond. And is anyone spoken directly to this tower? Uh, there have been people claiming they have seen him, claiming they have talked to him, conflicting reports of what he looks like. Um, our best intel, best we can tell, uh, the most cohesive reports we've been able to gather were uh, quite a large Goliath man, uh, kind of deep purple skin, uh, wields a large hammer when necessary, when he is fighting. Uh, but it's very rare that he has been seen or been known to fight. Generally, he sends his constructs to do his fighting for him. Yeah, and that's what I would do. Hmm. Yeah, we're just going to mull sort of the information. Yeah, this is a lot to mull. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we go there regardless, right? And then yeah. decide what we can do from, from there. Or if we can do anything. It's just uh, going against the uh, army is usually not recommended for four, uh, sorry, five individuals. There's a general rule, and I followed a general rule. So that's how I know. <laughs> Orden will nod. And then kind of look over to the rest of you. This is something I will do. Well, you're not None doing it alone. You do not have to follow me. No, we don't have to, but we gonna. Yeah, we're gonna. Too, too damn bad. Mm, indeed. Very well done. I thank you all. Of course, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't let you go alone. Why would anyone do that? You're a friend. We're together. We're abracadabra. Oh yeah. We're uh, by the way, we're abracadabra. Yeah, we're. Abracadabra. He looks up the guy. I see. You, you may have heard of us. Uh, can't say word has reached my ears yet, but perhaps that is because I am stuck on location in a rather remote part of the world. That's true. Maybe if I told you we were a brave band, also confident, adventurous, dispensing aid, brilliance, resourcefulness, always, maybe that would, uh, would hail. That does ring a vague bell, but oh, as well, I say... Oh, that's okay. I'll, I'll take a vague bell. I'll take quite a remote. bell. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, but, uh, if this is your intention to head to Balika, uh, as a gesture of goodwill, given that this will, in many ways, potentially assist myself and my organization. And he reaches down to a um, kind of small-ish bag tied to his waist. Um, and you see the telltale sign of just the hand and the arm disappearing in up to the elbow. Um, and he places four belts onto the table that he withdraws from the bag. Uh, wow, I love belts. These are uh, alchemist potion belts. Uh, mm -hmm. Quick access to potions. Uh, we often use them for similar such missions, uh, whether it be quick and easy access to invisibility potions or uh, gaseous escape potions or just healing potions if we're worried about getting in a fight. Uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he just slides them across the table to you guys. I'll add one to each character. Ooh. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, you know, uh, you've been helpful. Uh, we hope to be helpful. Uh, could perhaps you uh, help us arrange travel? Uh, get us uh, horses or a cart. I, I don't really know what is a road between there and here. I don't see one on my map, but maybe the roads are not included in this map. Uh, it is a, a simple enough road to travel from here to Belika. Right. Uh, you could reach it by foot in a day. Okay, uh, that's fine. Of course we can, if you do need, uh, 
uh, we could arrange some travel for you, but uh, it would be at a, uh, a subsidized cost. I can certainly get it for you cheaper than anywhere else, though. Mm, I don't know. What do you all think? You think we would just walk if it's a uh, dig? I think walking legs? would be fine. I'm yeah. sure you can all understand you are still quite new to myself and my organization. Mm. We cannot bet everything on you and give you everything for free. But we will assist. Of Hey, these belts and your information have been very helpful, and I thank you. That is quite all right. Uh, just as it happens, and along a similar vein, if you notice any sort of woodland creatures or birds or any such uh, creatures that are staring a little too intently at you, don't think anything of it. You are just oh. being monitored so that we know if you've unfortunately perished along the way and we need oh. to seek new help. Oh, so the birds aren't real? Uh, not these ones, no. My god, mm -hmm. this is the Illuminati. <laughs> uh, you know what? That actually brings up something I meant to ask. Uh, you just jogged my memory. Uh, everyone seems very scared to talk about this uh, individual. Uh, do they have like a some sort of spy network? Uh, informants, that sort of thing. Uh, and he kind of pauses as one of the goblins draws near the table, kind of bows, cleans the empty glasses away and leaves. Uh, we don't quite know. Um, we have some intelligence that he works quite closely with an individual that uh, others of his creed referred to only as the magician uh, Ooh, we believe there has been some magical uh, influence in this uh, at first we were quite worried that he'd somehow managed to place some sort of curse on his name so that if anyone ever uttered the name the tower he would know um, but we've since ruled that out but we don't know whether he is enchanting people uh, through the help of this magician fellow or if it is uh, some sort of arcano mechanical invention of his own. He is quite a skilled tinkerer as far as we are aware. So it is possible that there are eyes and ears everywhere. Yes, that is why people are very worried. There have been numerous reports of people speaking ill of the tower and subsequently disappearing or disappearing for a short time and reappearing uh, half construct mm -hmm. and claiming that they heard better their minds were changed and they left to join his glorious cause uh, that's concerning we understand there is also somewhat of a, re a I've had a bit too much to drink, clearly. Uh, a relationship with a network of uh, dark elves. Uh, they do seem to have some involvement in some aspects of what the tower does. Um, we've also had net uh, word of a network of... Uh, that also work as kind of part of uh, this drow group and their empress, um, a network of uh, Dwergar couriers who sort of ferry materials back and forth for him. Hmm. He seems well connected there, this one. Is there uh, an extensive uh, underground, and I mean that in the literal sense, uh, network on this isle? That depends on how underground you're talking. Uh, well, certainly, seeing this is the dark, <laughs> like underneath it. Certainly, uh, one would be able to access uh, a copyright safe under dark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My favorite! My favorite kind of under dark! Legally yes. distinct under dark. Yes. <laughs> Uh, one might be able to access Australia. Um, Fuck this off. proverbial <laughs> land down under. Better. 
Um, there is uh, an entrance, yes, or multiple entrances. Uh, there is one uh, in some old ruins which actually sit between Hapetra and Belika. Um, some of the mines up to the north and to the south also contain entrances to the underground networks. Um, and of course, uh, the underground network that myself and my organization use. Of course. But that is invitation only, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, one day we will get that invitation from you when we prove how helpful we can be. I'm sure you will. So, is there anything else I can help you with? Now for myself. <clears throat> I'm good. Lingers has been furiously writing. Uh, <laughs> the magician is on the page, like underlined, like angrily, a bunch of times. <laughs> oh, what was Aggressive. That? Oh yeah, Linger would not like a magician, would she? <laughs> the magician's well, still... also come up once before. It's the magician. Oh, uh, the magician. Getting brought up to a very loud motherfucker from Lindsay, which made me chuckle very hard. So did I say that? Yes. Uh, the first oh, time man. he was mentioned. There was a oh, very loud motherfucker. <laughs> I thought you meant just now. I was like, I'm so no, into no, writing no, no. These, these notes. Um, yes. Well, we're still uh, with him. Can I do some kind of check to see if I can tell uh, if he's at all modified as to why that I heard that thump earlier? Uh, sure. Ah. Give me another investigation check. Uh. 11. 11. It was also kind of less of a thump and more like the chair kind of creaked right. with more weight than you'd expect from such a tall and thin elf. Um, mm. As kind of the conversation lulls and draws to a little brief silence, you sort of kind of tune out the tavern behind you and start listening for kind of the whirring of arcano mechanical gears. Um, you know, to your knowledge, um, no matter how silent people have tried to make them, there has been no progress thus far in making an entirely silent running <laughs> arcano mechanical anything. Um, you listen out, you don't hear anything, with the exception of your own <laughs> machinery. But you're kind of used to how that sounds. You know it's definitely coming from yourself. You don't hear anything coming from him. Nor do you see anything. Um, but he... If that is everything I can assist you with, uh, you must excuse me, I'm not much one for shaking hands, but he kind of stands up from the table and kind of bows slightly to you. Um... It has been an absolute, absolute pleasure making all of your acquaintances, and of course, if there is any help you ever require from uh, the most magnanimous mage guild, by all means, feel free to ask. Does, um, does the chair squeak again when he gets up? Like There is like a creak of wood as he stands back up. Um, that is a very noisy chair. It is indeed. Uh, you would all have noticed as well, whilst he is kind of loudly announcing this to pretty much the entire tavern, <laughs> uh, he very pointedly said, Mage Guild. Mm -hmm. With a G. Um, which, Chester, you definitely pick up. Um, when you'd heard tell of the Mage Guild before, um, one of the tales and rumours was that they masquerade as a guild of mages, uh, under the assumption simply that you can say Maze Guild or Mage Guild very quickly and those who aren't listening carefully enough will just assume you've said Mage Guild. Smart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanks, Jared. I was confused. It was good fun working on that one with you. <laughs> hmm. uh, uh. That was um... legitimate 
dumb thieves can't that we came up with together as a joke. <laughs> um, Mira's like really worried about that. <laughs> She's like, Chan oh, looks pretty it's sturdy. A... Yeah, did it like bow or like? It didn't bow, yeah. but it was. It certainly sounded like almost like it. It squeaked almost as much as Warden's did when he sat down, like, with the weight of Warden. So wow, it's, it's... you're like... <laughs> Something like he's heavier than he looks, basically. Mira just, like, looks at him and is like, you have really heavy armor on because the only person that squeaks a chair like that is Warden. He, uh... <laughs> I, uh, I get that a lot. I, I understand that I do obviously look quite skinny, but as you quite rightly yeah. pointed out and he kind of lowers one part of the robe and you'd uh. expect there to be kind of exposed skin under but there is um still quite thin um but very solid plate underneath uh. um and mm. he um quite well armored and uh, a, a lot more dense than i look not in that way uh in in a way i'm a lot more dense than <laughs> i look too <laughs> um <laughs> Definitely give that me way. Another investigation check if you want, though. Yeah, because I do. Why not? It's 15. good fun. Well. Come on, Mira. 13! Okay. And uh, Linga. Oh, sorry. I was. <laughs> what now? Taking notes. <laughs> investigation right. check. Mira. Uh, get it out of the note thing. Trying to See, yeah, so no, the... because I already know. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's Lindsay knows exactly what know. shenanigans are going on. Yeah, 26. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I know because Lindsay told me. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of zoned out because I was like, oh, I don't yeah. need to participate. And I'm just Linga, <laughs> Linga I finally looks up from resummoning Rip, who claws his way out of the abyss that has just been summoned into the center of the table. Uh, as you look mm -hmm. up, Linga, there is a flicker to this elf's form. Um, and for a brief second, under the illusory image of this elf, you see quite a tall, relatively well-built minotaur. Um, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly much taller than the elf illusion is anyway. Um, yeah. But definitely lines up with what you just heard Mira saying of it. He sounds a lot heavier than he looks. Yeah. Um, oh, and also he picked. <laughs> clicks yeah. when you'd just registered as well, where he said he doesn't really shake hands often. <laughs> as Lingo mm -hmm. would very much know, that is one of the potential downsides to spells like yeah. Disguise Self. <laughs> yeah, she um, won't out him right now no. but she does have a very rare look of amusement <laughs> on her face oh god she's um, smiling oh yeah, god look at that that's um, amazing yeah. and he just bows and then uh i shall take my leave please if you ever need me again uh, do ask around for gunark glory speaker kind of gunark glory speaker what a name leaves Bye! Uh, he had some nice armor. Nice all around. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah, Very the armor is definitely part of the illusion as well. Uh huh. <laughs> what was he actually wearing? Did he have on pants? Uh, nothing. No. Uh, no. Straight <laughs> Straight nothing. Under just... the illusion, nothing. No. Um... I mean, could you blame him? I mean, it's hot here. I mean, if I look like. Got... <laughs> He's got cow fur covering he, stuff. Um, no, he's he's he was wearing sort of um, kind of light-ish uh, leather um, armor. And leather in this weather, man. In this weather. Hey man, it's leather. Economy. It's leather weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, was Lord. also wearing similar to the minotaur that you saw up at the docks, kind of more like a leather skirt than an actual pauldrons or trousers. Okay. Wow, he was such a nice guy. I really liked 
There was a lot of information conveyed. I appreciate that. Mm, yeah. You that took is, a lot of notes, true. Linger. I, I did. I really should do this more often. I feel like it would be helpful for all of us. Yeah, you're the smartest person <clears throat> here. No offense to these two. <laughs> she's not afraid of offending herself. She knows she's <laughs> stupid. Oh, doggy. Well, we're all intelligent in our own areas of expertise. That's so nice oh. of you to say, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> As Rip climbs up and takes his position in Linga's head. <laughs> yeah. How's his arm look? Good as new. Okay, good. There was a, a brief moment after his usual um, entrance shenanigans as he claws his way out of the bottomless black hole that he emerges from as he kind of mm -hmm. sprung out onto the table and was like both hands whole head chest legs mm -hmm. okay we're all here <laughs> yeah excellent yeah, everything's where it should be yes there was certainly a moment of he looks down and was like okay she's given me back both my arms have i lost anything else to get the arm back <laughs> <laughs> excellent We've all like, been nope, there. Both legs are still there. Cool. <laughs> he just wanted to summon his mum back, and he's lost an arm and a leg for it. It's not his fault. Uh, um, no. But yeah, um, what would you guys like to do as Mr. Glory Speaker takes his leave? Bye. Um. And you hear a cheer as finally. The half elf who was fighting the half orc just gets TKO'd in the corner. That was a good fight! <laughs> oh, I guess I should put also, there was a fight in the <laughs> tavern. A half, half elf and a half orc? Yes. Yeah. Um, orc, half. Half orc looks like his fuck. jaw's a little bit broken. One arm but... is just kind of hanging down, but the half elf is just unconscious and beaten bloody. All right, Mitch. I must okay. Leave. Perfect. Fare thee well. Fare thee well. Good time to leave. Bye, everybody. Um, Sorry. Are Bye. others continuing on further? Or are we? I'm a little bit longer. Yeah. Although that said, oh no. <laughs> um, oh yeah. <laughs> Forgot about the that eldritch part. horror. <laughs> oh no. Occurred. Let me join Zoom on my mobile. No. That will help. I wanted to see what it looked like when that happened. It's terrifying. It's not good. <laughs> Just the top of my shiny head. Perfect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thanks, Max. <laughs> um, <but yeah. laughs> What that was Max like in chat do? right now. Yeah, of course. Max is always in chat. Mm, of course. He's the best. He's supposed to be playing Valheim right now. <laughs> oh, we have we have. We do both. Hmm. Hello. Okay, right, right, right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, but yes, we can <laughs> continue if people want. Sure, although, just, uh, what are we doing? Is the question. I just want to get to the, the point where the giving the chick the, the in information pays off. That's all I'm, I'm hanging on for. Zoom is managed. There is Zoom. Oh no! You got Echo. Let's mute there that. Go. There we go. Perfect. And Zoom is back. There we go. Oh, oh, of course, did our stuff for this one, too. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, we should just get her to make our little Wizard of Oz thing. Hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to stop the sound coming from my phone for some reason, and it's not You get to be near her for the rest up. of the episode. Yeah. How fun for you. Are you guys hearing the sound coming from my phone as well? No. Not no. anymore. Good. There we go. 
it's muted. It was really horrible for me because I was hearing you guys echoed. Mm. Oh. <laughs> nope, it's still echoing. That's just but anyway, yeah, so what would you guys like to do? That's the question, isn't it? Uh, I don't, I don't have anything in mind, so... Yeah. No, not a thing. We'd wait until the morning, go back to our room and wait to head out in the morning. Yeah. Hit the road. Jax. Does there work? I mean, okay. we don't have any reason to go check out the other taverns, so... Kind of. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get on the road. Yeah, I think that's where the fun's going to happen. I mean, not that this wasn't fun. You know what I mean. Action. Yeah, I'll get Stop. rid of all this boring stuff that we've been doing. Yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boring Ray. Lord Drops Blah. of Warden's harrowing backstory. God, what a boring drag that is. Um, <laughs> Terrible. Things that do free people. <laughs> so, are you then, in that case, uh, heading back to the Hepetra Inn? Yeah. Okay. You head back to the Hepetra Inn. Um, and at this point, because it is um, much further down at the other end of Hepetra, so by this point it is starting to get to kind of uh, late afternoon, early evening. Um, and as you uh, enter, you can see... Um, off to kind of one side at just kind of a small table just sat from the looks of things reading a book is the uh, Dwergar guard from earlier now Chester has a debate in his mind <laughs> uh, he uh, pulls a uh, linger side uh, linger uh huh may yes. I have a void of course. The wood is... Thank you, first of all. Uh, second of all... You're welcome. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not quite ready to hop back into a uh, this sort of thing, I feel like. Uh, you know, I had it well, but the uh, devastation at what has happened to me has taken hold. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm doing the old fake it till you make it thing. So the thought of getting involved with this, I will admit, delightful looking Drugar female uh, <laughs> is horrifying to me, like so many eldritch whores at this time. I see. Well, that's easy enough. We'll just tell her no thank you and you can just go to bed. I am going to do that. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <laughs> so, do you want to tell her or? What I don't tell her. I don't her often. Mind. <laughs> Just the result. Warden's in. <laughs> yeah, ta I'll tag you in. <laughs> oh, here, here. Say this to her, and this... then he's gonna say uh, in uh, under common. Uh, you have eyes as beautiful as the glowing fungus of, uh, and then name some big famous cave that has glowing fungus. It's me. Mm. Eyes as beautiful as glowing fungus from famous cave. Well, he says it in undercommon, so you can impress her with your undercommon. You're going to have to learn it phonetically. And by the way, if you get this one weed wrong, it means um, you want to eat her eyeballs. So be careful about that word. <laughs> mm. Right. Let me see. <laughs> Mitch, what should I roll to try to remember this? Intelligence. Intelligence. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Let's see. 13. Oh, lucky 13. 
It ain't great, but you remember <laughs> it just well enough. Just. Nice. Good on you, Warden. <laughs> Very well. I shall handle this for you. <laughs> Fine. I guess Sorry. Linger will go so, tuck Mira in to get out of the way also. <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay. No then. So yeah. Warden has uh, the Warden. Warden will head over to the Jagar lady and kind of bow his head a little bit. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, I am uh, friends with Mr. Fields. Right. Uh, and uh, is it hot in here or is it just <laughs> not getting? <laughs> no, no, Warden will. Uh, she just slowly closes the book with a bemused smile. <laughs> Oh well. Uh yes. He uh unfortunately isn't feeling well. I see. I do not believe he will be available. It is uh you know, it it is nothing personal of course, it is something with him. <laughs> it's not you. It's not you, it's him. <laughs> she, uh... Well... I would be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little bit disappointed, but... It's okay. Uh... And she kind of reaches into um, a belt pouch, pulls out a small notebook, writes something down on it. Uh, Pass this on to him for me, will you? Sure. And he'll take it. He, uh... He did tell me to tell you this. And he'll... <laughs> and he'll, he'll tell her. She, uh... Just as he can. Chuckles. Thank you. Pass on my thanks to him. Yeah. Well then. Will not. Oh, good. I'm heading to my room, and she heads up the stairs towards the rooms. Ooh. <laughs> <Wouldn't> follow, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no. You have been handed a piece of paper by her before she headed off. No. Or not gonna read it. Okay. Yeah, he'll he'll take it up to Chester's room. <laughs> um, Chester would have read it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if the worlds were switch. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Chester, the note simply says, uh, "Gwynlin Goblin Breaker, Room 15, Hapetra Inn." Uh, he he and bites his fist a little at that, <laughs> but a ultimately... uh, small note in the bottom corner that just says "in case of emergency." <laughs> what room number was it? Room fifteen. Okay. Uh, not to be confused with Goblin Slayer. This is Goblin Breaker. Mm -hmm. Two very different people. Completely different. <laughs> um, cool. So, are you guys going to sleep then? <laughs> I mean, I am. Or you guys or an going to sleep? Of <laughs> rest of some sort will be had. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, funny you should mention that. Um, Linger. 
Yes. As Warden goes inert and Chester drifts off to sleep and Mura starts snoring next to you. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's that kind of nice brief moment of um, blessed silence that <laughs> Linger enjoys. <laughs> um, <laughs> Before. I feel like just like a full body sigh when we're all asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, before Rip kind of totters over to you, um, kind of places a hand on your spell book, uh, you see kind of a brief shiver run through his mm. body, and he. Greetings to you who have found my spell book. I must first apologize. Taking hold of one's familiar is quite a crass thing to do. A wizard's familiar is, of course, sacred, but I have been trying to communicate for some time. So far, been unsuccessful. Wait, so this voice is coming out of Rip? Yes. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> She's not like that at all. She like like hisses almost. <laughs> it's just like no, ew. Um, I would prefer if we could not use my familiar. If you have another option, you wrote through the book before. Can we just go back to written communication? I feel like that's. Uh, less intrusive. Email preferred. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> Please text, don't call. <laughs> yeah. In this instance, I simply wanted to make proper contact. But Do I, if you does would she prefer... recognize the voice? No. Good. <laughs> uh, if that is your preference, I can swiftly vacate. As I have already said, I do apologize profusely this is quite a crass invasion of one's privacy to speak through someone else's familiar well it's it's not just that he's my familiar he's his own entity you're actually in someone um naturally <laughs> so but very well and there's a shiver as rip just kind of looks around <laughs> like what just happened <laughs> I am so sorry. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Curls up. Pick him up. I am so sorry. We will get you a brooch of shielding, and that will never happen again. <laughs> Nods. Um, Rip just looks up at Linko. Only I may use this vessel. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. Um... I think there was a mouse in the corner if you just want to work off some feelings from that. Um, all right. So she'll, well, pat a rip, uh, turn to a, an empty page. Mm -hmm. Or actually her spell book just turns to an empty page. It knows what it's doing. Mm -hmm. There is a, a brief moment of nothing before um, my sincerest apologies starts to appear written across the page in very delicate cursive um, mm. I had hoped that imbuing my spell book with a portion of my own being would have left it strong enough that we could have addressed this before now but as I understand it, a portion of your own self became suffused within the same. And there has been some small conflict until now. Um, rest assured, as of this junction, the spellbook is, for all intents and purposes, yours. And the portion of yourself that is within it remains untampered by myself. But... 
with the power that you have gathered thus far, I have, in effect, been able to draw a small amount into myself. And therefore, it is my pleasure to humbly introduce myself to you as a fragment of the once great wizard, Sildaris. No oh, fucking shit. way! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. That's cool. <laughs> He's probably lying. That's cool. <laughs> That's the name of this campaign. That is the name That's of this the campaign. That's the name of the game. <laughs> oh my god. Um, well, she is going to be a little sus of that, um, but that's okay. Insight the yeah. joke. <laughs> yeah. Can the fragment of her soul insight the fragment of his soul? Sure. Oh, sweet. Okay. Why not? <laughs> um, why not? Imagine. A 19 on that soul oh. check. 19. Yeah. It seems pretty legit. Damn. All right. Well, still skeptical, but open to the possibility. Um, she will right back um i appreciate the apology i do understand the extenuating circumstances uh, i'm glad that we have talked that out and now have a, a more open method of communication uh, i've certainly come across your name a few times in my studies and more recently uh, will we be able to continue this um, rapport going forward? <laughs> I.e., do I need to like slam you with questions now, or can we like <laughs> mull over this? Um, there is a pause as the page suddenly starts to go blank. And then, as the final bit of ink vanishes, um, you see, it is to the best of my ability that I will continue to communicate in this way. Uh, there are, there appear to be brief moments where I am able to communicate with you uh, and will continue to do so where I deem appropriate or necessary or beneficial. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a pause, and you must also excuse me, it has been quite some time since I have been able to exercise any form of magical exertion, no matter how brief. <laughs> mm. Understandable. Uh, you may call me Linger. I will do some research on my own to see if there is any way... I can facilitate siphoning some power to you to make these exchanges less strenuous for you. Uh, the writing continues. Uh, my sincerest thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is my understanding that, and this is by no means me saying it was done on purpose and therefore is not for once in a great wizard's life bragging <laughs> but it is my understanding the reason you were able to survive what befell you was the small fragment of power contained within this book with which you were able to combine thus granting the book a semblance of quasi-sentience. Hmm. That is a fascinating hypothesis that I will be happy to mull over. It does offer several answers to how my situation came about. Um... 
You will have to pardon me. This is a bit unexpected, and I operate more effectively when I know what I've just stepped into. Oh. Not to I'm use sure its prerogative you're getting, at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're getting taxed from this brief exchange, so if it's all right with you, I would like to continue this at another juncture when I've had time to organize my thoughts and questions. There is... Judge, uh, I'd like a recess! <laughs> <laughs> there is another brief pause. The page empties and very well. If I may impart one small piece of parting advice. Um, another pause and from what I have been able to ascertain from my brief glimpses into your situation in like heavy italics <laughs> <laughs> it would bode well that you steer clear of the one known as Alistair Frost and by extension Sumilithrom. Spell that for me, Mitch. <laughs> I will put it in the chat. Ah, then I have to look at something else. <laughs> uh, Adventurers only. Boom. Meep, 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 meep. Wow, <laughs> that's a name. It certainly is. Have we heard um, these names? That one doesn't sound familiar. Alistair Frost, I think, if I'm remembering right, is maybe Mira's dad, but I have to check back on my notes. Mm. Or is that... Dickens' name? Certainly have never heard the name Sumilithron. Yeah, I've never. I'd remember. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Lots to think away about. And then, however, if this is the path down which you wish to continue, I'm certain you will encounter them, and I will therefore take it as my solemn duty to help you prepare for the same. Best of luck, and the page empties. Cool. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, Lindsay, Lindsay has to process that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to look back at my old notes. Gonna make a whole thing for linger. <laughs> well, so now we have questions. With that, as yeah. uh, morning rolls around, mm -hmm. we will end the session there. Um, we did awesome. a Yay. pocket wizard indeed. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's just Clippy. It's it's Microsoft Clippy. He's back. Hell yeah! Um, <laughs> so I added all my notes are in the journal feel free to add to that i will try That's to go back and add shit. old notes <laughs> god damn i'll try to go back and do that um oh god random things stop just... you're gonna make me rust <laughs> <laughs> uh i will just jump in and amend uh yeah i'm sure there's to google dune because you know, if we're uh, if we're dealing with Boogledoon, we got to name it correctly, guys. Come on. Uh, um, you know, we can't be misspelling quite possibly the greatest location in the entirety of Eroth, uh, mm -hmm. as you will discover when I do eventually take you there. Uh, whoops! One got day. to hit save. There you go. Save. <laughs> Oh, that kind of do. Yes, it it works better yep. with the um, fishmen voices that you will be hearing a lot of when you are there. <laughs> That's fun. Um, and for those interested, if we switch back to the world map, just if we end off and I'll switch back on the stream as well, and we zoom all the way out of Azith and we make our way all the way over to the Felician Ocean. 
Um, Boogledoon is all the way over here in the Sunset Archipelago. Oh, that's far away. That's far. Uh, yeah. Right next to Drung Lung. Drung Lung. There's some I'm great all... names around there. I'm all for <laughs> map hopping. That's like the opposite side of the world. Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? Um, it does mean crossing the crossing point. There are two places I really want to take you guys in this campaign, and I probably will. One of them is Boogle Dune, the other one is the Dune Crosser in Doblis, because that's great fun. It's a walking city. Um, but with all of that information dropped on you, um, yeah. as Linger is ruminating on these thoughts, uh, an image does come to her mind of... Oh. The Grand Wizard Sildaris, um, which I will drop into our Discord for our players. Um, but for the rest of you, I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. As Linga's theme plays Bye. us out. Mm -hmm. Good thing. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.